Hello and welcome to the Mission TV show. I'm so glad you could join us today. We have special guests from uh, missionaries from Bolivia with us today and um, want to share with you a little story about what they're doing there and something that happened recently brings a Bible text to mind. And that is in Psalms 91, verses 10, 11, and 13. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Now, you know, as missionaries, many times we depend on these verses without remembering that they're there sometimes. You know, we, we know that God has promised to take care of us. And sometimes we see it more clearly than others. And we have Stephen and Helen Wilson with us today. Welcome to the show. And um, we're just excited to hear how God has been working and how these verses are real to you through several experiences that you've shared with me already. And uh, we want to start with, the, with treading upon the adder. <laughs> what happened, Helen? <laughs> we were going home Sabbath evening, and it was dark, and I couldn't find my lantern. And I had my Your flashlight. My flashlight. And we had my potty pail outside because I didn't want to go hiking to the outhouse. Okay. And so I just assumed that the inside lights would be light enough to find the pail and no problem. And I found the pail, but I realized I was standing on a snake. Oh, boy. And so I jumped up and ran back in and screamed for Steve, and he came out with the flashlight. And... It was one of the venomous snakes. Oh, my. The kind they don't have any anti-venom for. Okay. It takes two days to die from their bite, and then there's no hope. And we realized the only reason why it couldn't bite was it had a rat in its mouth. Oh. <laughs> so God gave it something to bite before. <laughs> yes. You got there. Wow, what a story. It's so deep. that reminded you very clearly of this verse. That, that God still had a work. He was protecting us. Right. His angels were there chasing that little rat where the snake could get it in time. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Praise the Lord. That's a neat story. And um, Steve, I know you've had stories also, and we've got some pictures to go through, mm -hmm. but you've had some stories that, of God's protection for you as well. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a mission pilot, I'm sure you encounter all sorts of things. Yes on motorcycles and, and airplanes and just walking down the street. I've been robbed at gunpoint in Santa Cruz. Okay. So um, we've seen it many times. <laughs> God took care of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though you were robbed at gunpoint, mm -hmm. he, was, he was still there caring for you. Wow. Well, let's start through the story. I know you've got, you've got pictures showing where you're at now. Can you explain where you're at? And mm -hmm. Helen and I, we live just out of Santa Cruz, Bolivia, just outside of the city, basically on the edge of the city. Santa Cruz is a city of about a million people. Okay. It's um, one of the largest cities in Bolivia. Um, we have a few pictures just to show what it looks like where we're living. Uh, that's the house we're living in. It basically looks Almost the same right now, except for we have doors and windows. Okay. And uh, this was our first table <laughs> before we, we'd uh, purchased a table. So you make and do. And that was all our cutlery and, and all our plates and everything we oh, had. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. But it was enough. You could eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, there's the kitchen. Okay. With running water. And, oh, running water. Nice. And a uh, drain. Okay. Uh, for the sink. Okay. And this is our temporary outhouse, which um, we still, still are using. <laughs> Temporarily. Yeah. Hence the bucket. <laughs> and here's the temporary shower. Well, it has walls. That's better than yeah. the toilet area you just showed us. The, the toilet has, has trees around trees it. Trees around. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're still using the temporary shower, but... Uh, when we left Bolivia, we were tiling the bathroom. So we're hoping to finish the bathroom when we go back in, in the temporary facilities. Okay. So you'd have something permanent. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. That's beautiful tile. I am involved, I'm a volunteer with the Mission Aviation Project in Bolivia. I'm an aircraft mechanic and I'm also a pilot. I uh, help, I'm one of the pilots involved in the, in the project in Bolivia. Uh, I, we help fly missionaries to and from mission projects and we help fly any supplies they need. Okay. Or whatever they need flown. Okay. Is so that the, those are some of the missionaries that you're taking out to a mm -hmm. project or bringing back from a project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some of the projects are fairly deep into the jungle, and in the rainy season, the roads get yeah, impassable. They're dirt roads, and they go underwater. And so all the food going to those places also have to go over the roads over the river, and the river takes forever. And so sometimes we run out of food in the mission plane. Is the way to go. Right, mm. right. That's such a blessing that you can be of that, that kind of mm. service. Or if there's a medical emergency, the only way out is by plane. By plane, yeah. At that, in those seasons. Okay. And the other mm. way, you know, even hiking, even if it's not rainy, it takes no, too long many it, times. When the roads are good, it's at least three days by bus. That's when it's going fast as it can. Yeah. So still, <laughs> if there's a medical emergency, they still need the plane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So is this, is this another pilot there with you? Uh, is I, he is an aircraft mechanic okay. that was visiting with us. Oh, okay. This is uh, the airport in Guayra, meaning Bolivia, in northern Bolivia. It's on the border with Brazil, and... They accept international flights there. That's the control tower behind the airplane. Okay, <laughs> a little different from what we're yeah. used to. Okay, so they, um, there's, GMI has a project there in Guayaramini. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's Help. a high school boarding school. Mm -hmm. I worked there for two years. Okay. And basically, they also have an elementary school, but it's just a day school. Kids come and go home every day. The high school is there to not only train, obviously give the education of a high school, but to train them in basic Bible work. When they finish the school, they're not quite ready to go out on their own. And so other projects are starting to be started so where they can go out and actually get a trade, get more Bible work, and be independent Bible workers. Okay, so they but can have experience mm -hmm. in a guided type of situation. But there's okay. a lot of students who are coming out of there who are gung-ho to be missionaries. Awesome, and that's it's wonderful. a real blessing and a real encouragement, yeah. especially now that my students are graduated and are working with us now. It's really that's, cool. That's great. That's really great to see. That's an exciting short-term reward. You know, we know that our reward is ultimately in heaven when we, when we see the souls saved, but when we see the workers come into the work, that's a blessing, yeah. the reward. So what is, where is this place? This runway is in a place called Rurinabaki, Bolivia. Uh, GMI has another project named Familia Feliz near this town. This is a picture of one of the runways there. They have paved a runway crossing this runway, so they have a better runway now. So that looks like a road going across, but it's, mm -hmm. but it's another runway going mm -hmm. the other direction. Okay. So this one looks a little bit challenging because it has the mountain at the end. Is it as challenging as it looks? or? Um, it's, it's a long runway, okay. so it's not as bad as it looks. Okay, so there is opportunity to go around if mm -hmm. you need to. You're not stuck with the mountain. I know some of the jungle runways we've heard about are mm -hmm. a lot more challenging than others and so I, that's why I asked. <laughs> yeah. But in some of the, the commercial planes all you see is you can see out the front window and when the people see the mountain coming at them really fast <laughs> they start, start reacting. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> okay this is another part of your mm -hmm. job. We occasionally do medical evacuations as they're needed um, this is a picture of the most recent one that I've flown. This, there were three girls on a motorcycle and they ran over by a pickup truck. And there's a picture of one of the girls, their legs were ran over by the pickup truck. Oh. Um, 
and we were there in Ruru Navaki when the accident happened, and we were able to fly them the next morning to the hospital in Santa Cruz. Because the hospital there in Ruru Navaki, I don't think they even have an X-ray machine. Wow. And so, if the if we had not been there with the airplane, they would have been traveling over roads like this with, with broken bones. For at least two days. Oh. So God is, God is blessed. Mm -hmm. And he had you be near to where they crashed mm -hmm. when they were going to need you. And it, to us it looked like delays and delays and apparent delays mm -hmm. in our plans because we had it all scheduled. But then so you the were supposed the, to leave there? We were supposed mm -hmm. to leave two days later. Oh, but because okay. of all the... I mean, before. Two days earlier. Um, but because of all the delays, there were two evacuation flights able to be done mm -hmm. exactly at the right time. Wow. Praise the Lord. He provided. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. This is, yeah, this is the rainy season, or is this like all the time? It's like this. Rainy season. Rainy season. Sloppy. Yeah. Sloppy mud. That's the highway. Wow. <laughs> yeah, main highway, right? <laughs> the only road in. Yeah. Well, I'm thankful you were there. Uh, this is a picture of the Rio Bini in northern Bolivia. This is another way that people travel during the rainy season. They travel on the rivers. But as you can see with a picture of that river, it takes a long time. It's a roundabout way. Mm -hmm. Wow. We traveled up a different river, and it took us five days to get to the village where we were going to work. But by plane, it was how long? 20 minutes. Oh, Going the slowest the plane days. could go, they said. <laughs> wow. What? <laughs> you can see the value of the plane that way. Wow. So have you ever had, you've had experiences with the plane and mm -hmm. having danger. Can you tell us about one of those? I think the next picture is the, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the finish, or the nearly finish of the story, so. Mm -hmm. This is a picture of where I landed a plane off airport, off airstrip in Bolivia. I had taken off from Guaida Medellin in 2010, and I climbed up to 13,000 feet to fly over some weather but the engine started developing, it lost power and started running rough. It lost partial power. Uh, 60 miles out over the jungle during rainy season, it was, uh, couldn't, there, couldn't maintain altitude, so I turned back and headed back towards the airport I'd left from in Guaida mm -hmm. And uh, I made it most of the way back to the airport before the engine, the engine gradually ran worse and worse. And eventually I found a, f a field and there was a single lane dirt road running through the field. And the engine uh, finally lost complete power and the, uh, God worked it out that uh, I was able to make it there. And uh, it was uh, a beautiful kilometer-long stretch of dirt road that was smooth. All the rest of that road had ruts and potholes in it. Wow. And uh, nobody was on the road. And I uh, was able to make a landing without damaging the airplane. And I thought we would never see that airplane again. But I was able to land without putting a scratch on the airplane. And then... It started raining for five days, and we were able to push the plane up onto a little hill there, uh, which was the only spot that didn't flood in the area. <laughs> <laughs> and we were able to recover the airplane without any damage. Wow. So God provided the little dirt road. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then even though it rained, he provided a spot for his mm -hmm. plane. Well, that's a neat, neat story of God's... You know, care for you because, you know, 60 miles out over the jungle, if your engine had failed immediately, that would have been a bad story. Mm -hmm. A very different story, but God, God protected. Yeah. Uh, 
That's neat. So, where did the two of you meet? In Guayaramerin. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so you met in the mission field. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to share a little of the story there? What sure. were you doing there, Helen? I was at that time working at the high school there in Guayara. Um, that was the second year that I had been there. And Steve came down as the new pilot. DJ Not had been down there, and we were very sad to see him go. <laughs> Who's going to fly us now? Who's going to be our rescue pilot? And then Steve came down with another doctor pilot and I didn't have much time to really get to know him during the year because I was girls dean that's a busy that's job all consuming and I was a teacher I had no time but then at the end of the year my mom came down and my sister who was working at Familia Feliz at the same time um, they came to visit for a little bit and they got to know Steve and my mom decided that he was a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> And we started to write. And then the next year I went to work in Norway at the Matheson Mission School. And so we just kept in touch by email. And he didn't write very often, but then I would figure out why. Like, I was stranded in the jungle because I had a plane crash. Uh. I, did, I didn't crash. Well, right, <laughs> but the plane went down and you were out there for a while. Or, and then you'd tell crazy stories. I was held up at gunpoint, almost killed myself on a motorbike. <laughs> I'm still do, alive. Do I want to be involved with this? But yeah. <laughs> you see time and time and time again where God preserved his life. And you, it was obvious that he had a work to do and that God was protecting him. We keep them alive as long as necessary. <laughs> yeah. So you had gone there. Where are you from originally? Are you I'm from Canada. From Canada, mm -hmm. okay. So you had gone down to be a missionary just, just on your own. Yeah. Now you said your sister was there also. Did you go together at the same time? No, I had, been, I had gone before. Oh. Okay. And then my sister went down later. Okay. Because she was younger than I and had to finish high school. Okay. That's fun, though, to serve with family yeah. in the mission field, and then your parents could come and visit, or your mom could come. Yeah. So, Steve, what was your side, what was going on on your side of the story when, um, you, when you met? Well, I, uh, I had been a flight instructor in the U.S., Okay. and uh, our friend DJ Knott, I went to school with him at Andrews, and he went to Bolivia before I did, and before I went to Bolivia, and he was returning to the U.S. to get married. Uh, and they were looking for somebody to go down and fill that spot. And long story short, I went down. Um, and uh, the first day down there, I met Helen. But one of the reasons why I had been flight instructor in the U.S. was I was kind of waiting around looking for uh, a girl who was interested in being a missionary. And finally, <laughs> finally, I got fed up with waiting and I said, I'm just going to go be a missionary. And I, so I said, God, if you, I'm going to go down there and fly in Bolivia. And if you have somebody for me, you'll have to bring them down there for me. But in In the end, I realized that she was already down there waiting for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> she, God actually brought me down, down to where the girl was who I was going to marry. <laughs> But uh, so the moral of the story: just go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't yeah. wait. <laughs> the uh, if you're interested in marrying somebody, if you're interested in being a missionary. Um, and you're looking for somebody who is interested in being a missionary, the, the best place to find that kind of person is in the mission field somewhere because uh, it weeds out all the, all the ones who, who may not go. They're interested, but they may not go. I've mm -hmm. heard many people have told me, oh, I was interested in being a missionary, but 
uh, the, the, my wife or my husband was not interested mm -hmm. in being a missionary, and so they didn't end up going. But if you go and you marry somebody who's already a missionary, that uh, eliminates that, that possibility. Right, right, because you've seen them down there. <laughs> They're yeah. there already. Yeah. They've already gone. Wow, what a story. You know, um, someone shared with me a quote from Mrs. White recently where she said that the devil actually sends people mm -hmm. to distract people from being missionaries, mm -hmm. sends romantic interests into people's lives to distract them. So it's true. It's a part of the, the spiritual warfare we're in. But so you, you saw God's hand after you, you know, after the fact. Did you see God leading you to be in that particular place? Or had you been searching for different places to go or kind of always wanted to go to South America? Or how did you see God leading you to Bolivia in particular? In Bolivia? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, my friend DJ Knott went to Bolivia before I did. So you were uh, kind of interested in his stories. And he called back to, I was flight instructing at Andrews University, he called there. And he said he was looking for somebody, somebody who was interested in going and re replacing him down there. And uh, I, when he called, I was not able to go because I still was, was working on paying off the balance on my school bill. Mm. And so I had to stay and work and pay those bills. And uh, I, a number of months later, after I'd finished paying them off, paying off that bill, I uh, was thinking about uh, Bolivia. I don't remember what reminded me of it, but I, uh, I was wondering if somebody had already gone and to fill that position. Mm. And I, I asked God if I had already missed the opportunity to go there, if somebody had already gone. And uh, that was a Friday night. And then uh, the next Monday, I was working in the maintenance shop at Andrews. And Jeff Sutton, he was the chief pilot in Bolivia. And I didn't know him. I had never, I don't think, I think I maybe met him once, briefly. Hmm. Never talked with him. But uh, he walks in the shop and says, unannounced to me. Uh, and he asked me if I'd go eat lunch with him. And I went to eat lunch with him. And he asked me if I was interested in going to Bolivia. And I, I said yes. And I, I took that as, as an answer because I asked the question, and I didn't tell anybody I asked the question. And I, Jeff shows up and asks me if I want to go. Wow. And so I went. Yeah. Well, good. I'm so thankful. Because there's so much need out there, mm -hmm. and when people are willing, just to say, Lord, you know, where do you want me? and see the door open like that and just go. God can provide everything. He can protect you. He can give you the joys of your heart, you know, the desires of your heart. And uh, it just, that's such a neat story. I'm so glad you shared it with us today. Do you have any other, any other stories you'd like to share? Just we have another minute or two here. And, or anything you'd like to say in particular to anybody else that's considering being a missionary? Um, we do have another story, but I don't know if I could tell it that quickly. That quickly. <laughs> Why don't you um, try? Go ahead. <laughs> um, basically, on the way back from a dentist appointment, I met a woman in Santa Cruz. She invited me to a prayer group, and I. Uh, she. I uh, I went I went the next week. And she introduced me to a group of people, and one woman in particular had been uh, praying and fasting since 1990. And uh, they then they believe that the Bible is the authority of what's true, mm. and they they brought out they brought out uh, Bibles because they 
some of, because they copy the Bible by hand, and at the end of each chapter, they summarize what they think it's saying. And uh, so they brought out bi hand copied Bibles. Some of the people in this group had copied the Bible three or four times by hand. And another. Just to understand it better, not to gain points. Wow. It's just to know the Word of God better. And wow. they. Uh, they we, another missionary, Lincoln Gomez, went with me that first time I went, and we realized that they know the Bible better than we do. And we asked them if they, but we asked them if they were interested in studying prophecy, and they said yes, we'd like that. And uh, they, uh, so we went back, and when they, when we read through Daniel chapter two, and uh, they learned where in Nebuchadnezzar's dream we are on that. Where, on where, where in prophecy on the statue in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, mm. and what comes next? These, these people, their mouths dropped, and they were amazed. They, they were like, wow. This is what they said. They said, wow, we have been praying for years to understand these things. We need to tell people. Wow. And Praise the Lord. I, I found it very amazing and it's been a great blessing to see the Holy Spirit working through the Bible to bring people to I uh, the, the biblical beliefs the understanding of himself mm -hmm. and his truths and that's a miracle in itself because the Bolivian people are poor people and they are taught to reason mm -hmm. from a young age they don't reason wow. mm -hmm. and these people do because of the word of God Wow. They, they'd been praying for 23 years, praying and fasting and reading the Bible. And uh, it's, it was a very blessing to see them believing the Bible. Wow. So is that an ongoing study that you get to have while you're there? Yeah. That's wonderful. They test everything by the Bible. Well, good. Everything. They're out there with their Bible. Does it agree? <laughs> Does it agree? Wow. They, they're people of the book then. Mm -hmm. oh, it was... Uh, a blessing to meet some of God's people in another fold. <laughs> right, right. Thank you so much, Steve and Helen, for joining us today and for sharing these stories of how God is leading and how God is protecting. And, and I just, I just want to encourage you to continue, continue following God. It's such a testimony. I know many times we're in the work and we're seeing what we're doing and it doesn't feel like it's a big part or it's important even sometimes what we're doing, but it is important that each of us is where God has asked us to be. And so thank you for your testimony today. And I want to thank you viewers for joining us and ask you to please pray for them and also to choose to seek God, to seek where God wants you to be, to find it and to go there because you'll find the blessings. They found each other in the mission field. And you never know what, God, what blessing God has in store, what kind of testimonies you will have. And you will see these verses in Psalms 91 being true for you too. In your own life, you'll see him working. So thank you for joining us. And please keep seeking God. God bless you until we meet you again on the Mission TV show. <laughs>